everyone and welcome to my session driving excellence empowering through community of practice i'm ishra and while some of you might know me in my professional capacity as a senior technology analyst with the salesforce center for excellence there's actually more to my journey i lead the salesforce community of practice here at southwest airlines and my passion for community involvement doesn't stop there. I wear multiple hats from being a organizer for Fresco admins and Salesforce Saturday of North Dallas to serving as a board member for Amplify. I feel these roles resonate deeply with my belief in giving back and being part of transformative communities. Outside of professional sphere, I absolutely cherish um, traveling around the globe, making memories with my wonderful husband and my two children. It's an honor to share this journey and my insights with all of you today. Before we dive into our presentation, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to all of the sponsors who have made Box Fun Dreaming possible. Their support has been instrumental in bringing this event to life. So we're about to venture on to a fascinating exploration. Let me give you a glimpse of our roadmap. We'll kick things off by demystifying what communities of practice or COPs truly represent. Once grounded in the basics, we'll elevate our understanding to recognize why COPs have be become instrumental in today's professional landscape. Transitioning from the why to the how, we'll pull back the curtain to see how these communities thrive and drive change. Now, illustrating the theory with practice, we'll dwell into a compelling real life narrative that shines light on the tangible impact of COPs. To wrap things up, I'll be all ears. Your perspectives, of queries, and insights will not only enrich our discussion, but also shape our collective understanding. So let's embark on this enlightening journey. At its heart, a COP represents a gathering of individuals bound by common concerns, challenges, or interest. Now, their union isn't solely for personal growth. It's um, also for achieving like shared objectives within a professional domain. These communities place a strong emphasis on the exchange of best practices and then on the creation of new transformative knowledge. Consistent and meaningful interaction is at the core of this be it through your traditional face-to-face -face meetings or a more modern like web-centric platforms that we're all accustomed to. If I were to paint a picture, think of COPs as clubs, school clubs, but instead of being hobby-centric, they revolve around specific professional themes, um, say be it customer service, technology, or any domain. It's a space where enthusiasts convene, share, and grow. The notion of community of practice or COPs is not is a novel. Throughout history, informal COPs have always existed, actually. However, the formal recognition of this concept traces its roots back to learning theory. It was cognitive anthropologist Jean Lav and Etienne Wenger who introduced the term community of practice. This was during their in-depth study of apprenticeships. Um, they viewed them as living curriculums. Interestingly, upon defining this term, they started recognizing these communities even in places that did not have uh, structured apprenticeship systems. So. Fast forward to today, COPs have transcended their original scope. They have become pivotal in enhancing knowledge management, bringing the divide not just in educational sectors, but in business, 
government bodies and various other organizations. And let's classify them. Broadly speaking, there are four types of COPs where um, there's um, helping communities, acting as forums where members assist each other in um, their day-to-day -day challenges. There's number two, there's best practice communities, curating and sharing creme de la creme of practices. There's knowledge stewarding communities, essentially acting as knowledge guardians, ensuring that a repository of insights is always accessible. And lastly, innovation communities, the powerhouses of revolutionary ideas and practices. And fast forward to today, I would say most COPs are a combination of all four types. Derived from Wenger's 1998 study, COPs have five essential functions. They educate by disseminating vital information related to practical queries and challenges. They support through fostering collaboration and interaction. Their role is to cultivate, assist groups to embark on, assisting groups to embark on and sustain their learning journey. They encourage by celebrating member achievements through active discussions. And importantly, they integrate, encouraging members to challenge their newfound knowledge and to channel um, tangible change. But why are COPs a cornerstone for professional learning? Their benefits are manifold. Number one, they bridge individuals, some who may never interact otherwise, especially in this remote world. They offer a common platform for mutual understanding through sharing. They stimulate discussions, open doors to problem solving and no novel opportunities. They stand as a bastion for genuine communication, mentorship, introspection. COPs capture invaluable knowledge, refining common practices by identifying solutions. They breathe life into collaboration, allowing the free exchange of innovative ideas. They inspire actions that manifest into tangible outcomes. And they are cru crucible for fresh insights, helping professionals adapt to ever evolving needs and techs. Now let's delve into the transformation in the learning needs of IT professionals and how COP stand as a beacon in this change. Firstly, IT faces complex challenges. Here, implicit knowledge, what is, which isn't easily written down becomes pivotal. And in today's technology landscape, collaboration isn't a choice, it's a necessity. Technology work is increasingly distributed and COP support this collaborative approach. With knowledge visibility, the beauty of COPs that they hide and highlight often overlooked insights, making the implicit explicit through dialogue and shared experiences. Innovation in IT or technology isn't just internal. COPs tap into a reservoir of diverse thoughts, some even from outside your organization. And an exciting aspect is the um, integration of learning with work. In COP, there isn't a strict division. Every task can be a learning opportunity. Lastly, the true value of COP lies in the profound reflection and inquiry of its members and the tangible actions that arise arise from that shared knowledge. So let's quickly break down the community practice into three core pillars. Domain is a shared it's a shared interest and commitment that sets members apart. It's like the glue that binds everyone. Community where collaboration happens. Through discussions and joint activities, members foster collab collective learning and build lasting connections. Practice means members aren't just theorists, they're doers. 
they gather resources and insights and then implement them in a real world scenario. In short, community of practice, I would say, combines passion, community spirit, and hands-on application. I want to share this sequence because this beautifully captures the essence of the COP. When you look at the sequence, you'll see that a COP often originates from a collective need or challenge. It's a, it's a phase where individuals or organizations recognize common questions or issues that need addressing. This becomes the foundation upon which the COP is built. Once the core issues are identified in the a yellow circle there, there's a need to bring together like-minded individuals or entities who share the same concerns and interests. This phase is about reaching out, um, networking, and bringing individuals under a unified banner. With the community in place, members begin to share experiences, insights, and resources. It's a vibrant phase marked by workshops, discussions, uh, collaborative problem solving. The focus here, I would say, is mutual learning and growth. And then drawing from this collective wisdom, members now implement new strategies, methodologies, or practices in their respective fields. It's about taking the theoretical or discuss knowledge and translating it into tangible actions. When you move to post-implementation, it is absolutely essential to assess the results. This phase is about reflection and understanding the impact of the changes made. Members share their experiences, uh, successes and challenges, paving the way for further re refinement and learning. So what do COPs look like? Let's delve into the different avenues where our community of practice truly, truly shines. Have you ever felt stuck on a design? So that's where we brainstorm and get past those blockages. Need a specific piece of code or a resource? Just ask. You're um, handling a unique customer scenario? Share and learn from similar experiences. Want to showcase your Salesforce or, or replicate a product setup you've encountered? The community is a powerhouse for collaboration and shared insights. Establishing a COP requires a collective effort of many, not just a single individual. Even a basic COP is comprised of several key roles, one being the facilitator, the core group or the steering committee, and of course the COP members. The facilitator is instrumental in steering the COP towards its goals. Um, setting the agenda, leading discussions, and maintaining focus and productivity within the group. On the other hand, the core group or the steering committee, or sometimes called the planning committee, consists of a smaller dedicated subset of members, I would say usually four to five, who provide the COP with direction and leadership. They are usually tasked with making crucial decisions and to ensure that the COP remains on track with its objectives. Lastly, the COP members from a larger group of individuals that participate in the COP and contribute to its initiatives. These members bring valuable knowledge and expertise that significant, significantly contributes to the success of the COP. So they are contributors. As we delve deeper into the world of COPs, it's also important to acknowledge that challenges can emerge. Now, first, there's a potential for certain obstacles like waning interest or discussions wearing off tangent of off or off course. It's not uncommon. 
but recognizing these early is key. Then next, we must emphasize the paramount, paramount importance of leadership and management. A strong leader steers the ship, ensuring that the COP stays on mission and value-driven. Their role can be overstated in shaping the community's direction and maintaining its relevance. Lastly, to keep the energy alive, and ensure members remain engaged, strategic measures are necessary. This includes um, consistent, value-rich content, interactive sessions, and regular feedback loops. By prioritizing engagement and focus, you can harness the true power of the COP. Drawing from extensive research, Wenger had has shed light on some pivotal factors that play a role in the success and at times the challenges faced by COPs. Firstly, COPs are fueled by social energy. This energy is both a byproduct and a driver of identification. The passion members have for the domain is central. This is why having a clear, well-defined domain is so essential. Then comes leadership. Every successful COP owes a lot to the dedicated individuals behind the scenes. These are the folks who take it upon themselves to nurture, guide, and hold space for the community. It's worth noting that many COPs actually struggle, not due to their dwindling interest, but often because there isn't someone dedicating their energy and time to handle the logistics and to main the, maintain the community's momentum. Lastly, we have time. Now we all juggle multiple responsibilities and finding time can be a challenge. In theory, if the interest in the community is strong, time shouldn't be a barrier. However, the reality is different. Given this, it's important, it's imperative that community activities and interactions offer a high value for the time that the members invest. How do we assess the effectiveness of our COP and its initiative? We must have a robust data collection plan in place this will definitely facilitate accountability and offer valuable insights that can be reflected upon and shared. It is essential that we set clear expectations for all participants to actively gather and share evidence demonstrating the COP's impact. We must also provide adequate, adequate resources and support to help our members understand and implement effective data gathering, gathering strategies. Now, this may include uh, collecting case studies, testimonials, or photos that highlight the COP success. But please make sure that you obtain the necessary permissions for sharing such a material. And to accurately measure the impact of, the, of your COP, we, should employ a range of methods as well. It could include uh, conducting surveys, um, pre and post, holding feedback sessions, um, compiling success stories, or creating summary reports. Lastly, to build a comprehensive picture of your COP's impact, we need to have clearly defined goals from the outset. Now, this will guide our data collection ensuring that we gather um, diverse data from multiple sources over a period of time. Ultimately, the results should be organized and shared in a way that's meaningful and valuable to all members of your COP. IBM's use of COP serve as a real life inspiration for a lot of us, and they did harness the collective expertise within their organization to foster innovation and 
consistent best practices across global operations. So this use case here is IBM is a multinational technology company and it's recognized the importance of fostering an environment of continuous learning and collaboration among, among its diverse employee base. Their goal was to harness the collective expertise within the company to drive innovation and implement consistent best practices across the globe. To achieve this, IBM identified key focus areas such as cloud computing, AI, quantum computing, and cybersecurity, and created Connections, an internal platform that facilitated document sharing and collaboration among, among employees. There were regular webinars, workshops, global conferences were organized to promote the benefits of COPs while cross-team collaboration was also encouraged to bring innovation to market faster. The results of this IBM strategy was impressive. The intersection of diverse expertise led to innovate solutions for clients, consistency was maintained in global operations, and employees had the opportunity to learn from experts in their field, leading to rapid skill development. Moreover, despite the geographical differences, teams felt a stronger sense of unity and collaboration. So thanks for letting me share this um, real life inspiration from IBM. But as we look for towards the future, Community of practice will continue, I feel, to evolve and adapt to the changing landscape. We can expect, I think, a greater emphasis on digital platforms to facilitate um, global collaboration and the integration of artificial intelligence, AI, to create um, personalized learning experiences. Additionally, there will be a stronger focus on measuring the impact and the ROI of COPs, as well as the inclusion of more diverse and cross-disciplinary expertise to drive innovation. In conclusion, community of practice, COPs are, I feel they're more than just groups. They're a dynamic ecosystem of learning, sharing, and growth. And it, they're crucial for, ever, for this ever-evolving professional landscape COPs are a vital tool for fostering continuous learning and knowledge sharing within organizations. They play a crucial role in promoting innovation and implementing best practices. As we move forward, advancements in technology and methodologies will further enhance the effectiveness of COPs by embracing community of practice, um, we can ensure our success in this ever evolving world, I think. And um, before we conclude, I wanted to provide you with some additional resources to further explore the topic of community of practice. And here's a list of books and websites that uh, offer valuable insights and information. Um, I also recommend checking out these uh, tools and platforms that can be used to create and manage your own community of practice. Um, we use Teams in our company. There is, of course, Slack. And um, Lastly, don't forget to, to join some relevant online forums or discussion groups to connect with like-minded individuals and learn from their experiences. There is a community of practice on LinkedIn. There is a, a core community of practice. And if you're interested in more of the learning theory, of course, there are books like Cultivating Community of Practice by Etienne Wenger and... Uh, a couple of uh, those books that I've listed are a pretty good read.
So thank you so much for your time and attention today. I hope that this presentation has been informative and useful in understanding the values of community of practice and how they can be utilized to drive success within an organization. If you have any further questions or need additional information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And don't forget, there are many amazing sessions lined up for you today. Each, each session is packed with valuable insights and knowledge, so make sure you don't miss out on the opportunity to learn from the experts. And let's make the most of this experience together. Thank you again, and uh, you all have a great and blessed day.